It just looks like poop. Like, can you see how like patchy and horrible and unblend this is? I feel like a horrible person. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. And today we are doing a requested another get ready with me. And today we are using all drugstore products, full face of a drugstore. I have picked up a lot of things that are kind of new and that are definitely new to me. So we're going to be trying some of those out today. Hopefully as I do more of these, I will get better with them and they're not really super boring, which I feel like they are because I'm just rambling on without any kind of like prompt script or anything. But enough talk about that. Let's just get into it. Gotta push the hair back like that. Bring you guys in nice and close so you can see all my horrible dead and dying skin. This is what I look like normally. Unfortunately, not absolute everything I'm going to be using is going to be drugstore because I'm doing Project Pan and this is one of the things that I'm trying to use up. If you haven't seen that video, I will leave that bad boy link down below for you all. I'm very excited because it is my first ever Project Pan, and I can tell you guys already, I picked the um, Lorac Pro 1 and the Urban Decay Vice 3 or 4 palette, and I am ready to take the Vice palette and throw it out the window because I'm like, I'm done, I'm tired, I'm bored of you, apparently I didn't like you nearly as much as I thought I did. I've actually got three different eyeshadow palettes that I'm going to be like deciding from. I have two of the new Wet n Wild whatever. This is the Not A Basic Peach and this one is the Rosé in the Air. And I also have the Milani Most... Wow, okay, that was like... <laughs> The Milani Most Love Mats going on here, and that's what this one looks like. I've heard really good reviews about the one that I didn't pick up, which was like, I don't know, Coveted or some kind of jewel whatever going on. These all actually have really freaking similar colors. Ooh, that's really deep. Um, I think I'm going to start off using this shade in the Milani palette, which is Fancy Vanilla. And I'm going to be using this Sonia Kashuk brush. It's just like a nice, what, ooh, it's got a lot of pigment on it. And now we're just going to sweep that through. I always feel like my makeup doesn't turn out as well as I would like in these, like, kind of get ready trying products videos because... Like, usually, I am i don't have a vanity. Um, my makeup cases, as you guys have seen, one's there and one's there. Like, I'm right between them. And I usually just take what makeup I want to use and I put it in the bathroom with me. And that's, that's it. That's all I do. And so having it in this situation where I'm blind because I don't have my glasses or contacts in and it's a completely different scenario, I'm like, I don't think I'm working to my full potential. Okay, that's just kind of a base whatever color. Let's look and see what we have here. We've got some pretty, I think I'm going to go for this orange one right here out of the Wet n Wild Life's a Peach, that shade right there, which does not have a name. I think it is number, I don't know, seven or three. I, I have no idea. But, ah, lost my brush. I'm going to take this on this Zoeva crease brush. Kessie, if you're watching this, you have converted me. This is my absolute, like, favorite. I wash it after every time I use it because I know I'm going to be using it again. And let's get this little right here and start getting some blendy blendy going on. Okay, it's kind of nice. It's pigmented, but I'm noticing that it's, like, not placing very well where I put that other shadow the Milani one it's not like laying really pigmented it's just kind of blending out into nothing which is not what I want from an eyeshadow and obviously these palettes these wet and wild ones are like $4.96 at Walmart so but I have heard good things so I mean I want to be impressed yeah we're kind of having the same problem with the other eye over here but not as bad and like I said with this angle I am like not performing this is not my final form you are not aware of the ultimate slay I am capable of it's always funny when you do your eyeshadow before like your face makeup because you look at yourself and you're like I don't even know if that eyeshadow is any good and you just look crazy because your whole face is just 
nasty and horrible. And then you put foundation on, you're like, oh, okay, all right, I can work with that. I can work with that. Okay, I am done with that shade. It is pretty powdery, I will say that, but you know, I have more expensive eyeshadows that are, more, you know, just as powdery. I'm now gonna go into this shade right here, which looks about the same. No, it's a little lighter. This shade from the Rose in the Air. No idea what name it is. It's just a number. I am not a number. I am a free man. Toast to you all guys who know the Prisoner Man. Okay, it's like kind of there. Like not really, but like kind of. I think there's a little bit of definition. If there is, there's just like a teensy weensy bit and I'm like really packing it on. So not sure how I feel about that. Like usually with palettes that I use with mattes, I was using the um, new Lime Crime one the other day. The colors like layered really well and like they blended together without looking the same, if you know what I mean. And this one just is not impressing me, which makes me really, really sad. All right, let's go on to something a little bit deeper. Let's see here, let's try, once again, powdery, but you know, I'm gonna try this like next deep shade from the same palette and see what happens with that. Still using the same brush. This is my favorite for doing that outer little bit there. And let's see what we can get. Once again, it's like obviously picking up shadow on the brush, but it's like when you put it in, it's like the faintest, littlest, subtlest difference, which I am not all about. I mean, maybe for like beginners or something like that. Yeah, I was definitely hoping for this to be a little bit more than it is, but it's just like oh my goodness i don't know it's like really frustrating me and i'm like why i want to have good eyeshadow and i love these tones and these colors you guys know i do i'm actually looking at this and i'm like this is the look that i did with the full face of kat von d without the bright yellow going on but before we do that i am going to do the inner part of my whatever using this little just sonia kashuk one and i'm gonna Start. Now I'm going to use this one from the Life's a Peach palette. Life's a, not a basic peach. Oh my goodness. And it looks like it has just like a hint of shimmer. So I figure this will be good for just kind of brightening and preparing for any kind of like shimmer shadow I'm going to be doing. Not horrendously pigmented, but you know, like I keep saying, they were like $5. So I feel like you kind of get what you pay for. But a lot of Wet n Wild's other products like perform super, super really well. I'm not saying these don't perform well. They're just not as good as I thought they'd be. You just have to apply a lot to get any like crazy pigment going on. And then back to this and let's try, I hate to go in, yeah. Let's try this brown here. And this is Umber the Sun and we'll see what we can make work. Like, I don't know if I'm just having a bad eyeshadow day, but I'm looking at these eyeshadows and how they're like laying and I'm like, that is not, not, I am capable of so much more. And when I do my makeup, it turns out okay. And now it's just like, meh. And these ones are, the uh, Milani ones do seem to be a lot more pigmented and do, um, go on a lot better with more impact than the wet and wild ones do but still this whole blending situation i'm not happy with i think that's as good as we're gonna get for now let's move on to doing some foundation so i got a new primer to try out this is the milani prime light face primer strobing pore minimizing oil free i need anything and everything that makes my face look brighter and less ruddy than it is. So we're just gonna try some of this and see <clears throat> what happens. 
Okay, it definitely has like a very pearlescent sheen to it. I don't know if you guys can like see that. Kind of like the, um, oh, what was it called? The L'Oreal like, I don't know, Lumi or something like that. That was very, you know, brightening. I did really enjoy that one, but it's not cruelty free, so could not use it. What I'm most concerned about always is this like dry patch right here. I just, I need to like make it not exist anymore okay and for foundation i did pick up the new oh my goodness how do you what okay it's a oh it's a oh oh okay oh what oh okay all right i didn't realize that this is the physician's forney forney Physician's Formula, the Healthy Foundation Brightening Complex, and I have mine in the shade LC1 for all skin types. Let's give it a whirl. This isn't how I apply my foundation. Like this is this is like not ideal for a concealer. Yeah, this is great for a foundation. Not so much. And I'm just using my um, Real Techniques Beauty Blender just because that's Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge, whatever. And compared to the last foundation we tried on here that was like 50 billion shades too light, this ain't too bad. It actually looks really nice on my skin. It's like very smoothing. And I can tell you right now from like how my skin felt this morning, I was not having a really good skin day. So that's definitely saying something. So maybe, like I said, I'm not a fan of this smeary doe foot whatever thing. I know that Clinique has a foundation like this, and I don't know if the Tarte Shape Tape also has the doe foot applicator or not, because I don't have the Tarte Tape, and I'm probably not, I mean, the foundation, and I'm probably not getting it, so let me know if you guys have it, and if it does. And also the horrible thing is like looking at the camera, I'm like, oh, it doesn't look like whatever. And then I'll look like in the mirror and I'm like, oh, it looks fine. So I think the camera has a tendency to accentuate things and lie to me about how horrible my face looks. Cause you camera. Like, even if it had just been straight up in a bottle form, I'd have been like, okay, whatever. But a pump, please. I need a pump. I need something. I'm just like, just ugh, cover all the blood. See, my problem is, is each time I'm putting it in, it's getting this like nasty, just, ugh, I feel like that's gonna get gross real quick. This is definitely a like more light to medium coverage foundation, I would say. It is not heavy or like spackle full on, plaster cast coverage, but it does look really nice on my skin, which is nice because it's cruelty free and I need all the cruelty free foundations I can get. Okay, now that I think we've dab 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 dabbed enough, time for concealer. I am not using a drugstore powder. This is a powder that I have in my project pan and I have made progress. I'm not gonna show you guys because I'm gonna be doing updates on that, but I have made progress. I'm actually so happy. I'm gonna be using the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define Full Coverage Conceal and Contour in the shade C1. Whatever that means. Light AF is what it should be called. And then we're just gonna take this. And then we're gonna... I should do a video doing makeup like um, big beauty girls with like triangle. I should comment down below if you want to see me do like a makeup look, makeup video doing my um, makeup like popular big beauty gurus. Now I have used this concealer a couple times before and I do really like it. It looks good under my eyes. It's very smooth and whatnot. But you do have to be particular about the kind of powder you use with it because sometimes it can get a little crepey and whatever and ain't nobody want that. Okay, all right, this mirror is definitely better because I keep like bending over to look at this one and I'm like, no, no, we ain't got time for that. And with this foundation shade, it is very brightening. 
I have tried it with some other foundation shades that I have, like my Wet n Wild, and it's like the exact same color, which probably means the Wet n Wild is too pale for me. But oh well, I really like the finish of this foundation. All right, I think we've blended that out wonderfully. And then we're gonna go into the Too Faced Primed and Poreless Pressed Powder, whatever. It's my powder brush. I'm so excited. I don't want to show you guys though. You have to check back for my um, uh, Project Pan follow-up. I'm going to have a couple different follow-ups throughout the year until we get to the end, the glorious end, and we'll see what kind of progress I was able to make on everything. Now I don't, I hardly ever powder my whole face because I'm so stinking dry. I just do the under eyes right here where that concealer was to be nice and set it. A little bit down the nose and if I see like just little sections that are just whatever but I don't do the whole face. Alright, now let's get doing to that under eye and let's see here. Let's go with the... Oh, let's start off with the Not A Basic Peach and I'm going to do um, this shade that's transition. I'm going to do this little, it's like a little $1.50 elf brush, but I really like it for doing the lower lash line under eye, whatever we call it. Okay, that shade seemed to work really, really well. Now I'm going to go from the exact same palette and do a little bit of that really dark brown right here, just kind of towards this end of my eye. That is all just to add a little bit more of intensity and deepness to my eye sockets. And a little bit. It just doesn't want to blend to that top lid. Like, literally no colors like, all right, you've got three colors, that's it. No more is what it's saying to me. From a distance, I guess it looks okay, but from close up, not so much. All right. I'm going to do my brows off camera just because that's kind of boring and for the sake of time. So when I come back, I'll have banging brows, hopefully. Beautiful. I have eyebrows now. Let's go on to... I usually do blush before highlighter, so I have these three. They're not new, they're new to me. These like, what are they called? Color Harmony Blush Palettes. This one is in Berry Rays. This one is in Pink Play. And this one I think I'm gonna use is Coral Beams. Ugh, so I'm just gonna open this bad boy up, use this. This is like the multitask brush from Sonia Kashuk. And I'm just going to kind of go in there and get, 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 <sighs> we'll see what happens. Oh, heavens. Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> That's a really pretty color. It's not as illuminating as I would like it to be. And I'm really concerned that this part here anyway is like an overspray, but... We'll obviously just have to see and be using the blush a bit more. Then for highlighter, we're really going to pack this stuff on because I have a bunch of different things I want to try that I've been dying to try. First is this Wet n Wild Hello Mega Glow Hello Halo Liquid Highlighter. You guys know I don't like liquid and creams, but this has like a cute little like doe foot applicator. The doe foot applicator must be really in this season. I'm like, oh, that'd be easy. Just kind of and then blend it in. So we're gonna try that first and see <laughs> what happens. This could be disastrous, y'all. This could be, oh heavens, I may have chosen the wrong color. Oh yeah, this color is in Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer Holographic, Halo, Halo Graphic. That's very punny. And then we're just gonna boop, 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 boop. And then we should have, And then blend it out, hopefully. Okay, that's nice. It doesn't seem to be removing any foundation, which is good. No, it seems nice. I mean, we got that little hello. Maybe, like I said, I should have tried the more. I had two shades. I should have tried the more champagne-y shade with this look, but I ain't mad at it. 
It is like a very, I like it because it's like holographic, but it's like still more of that like from within glow. So not mad at this. It did kind of disturb things a little bit on the nose. It isn't laying very well, but that's okay. We're going to throw some powder highlighter on this anyway. And the first one I'm going to throw on this is the Ulta Beauty Duochrome Illuminator. This is in Prismatic Unicorn, which y'all, when I hit 500 subscribers, I picked up one of these for you guys for that giveaway. So let's just do some of this. You guys know I love the Ulta Beauty Illuminators, the normal ones, so hopefully these will be just as good. Okay, all right. Definitely giving a opalescence to my skin. All right, let's see what it looks like without that as a base. Not too blinding. This is probably going to be one of those highlighters that has more of like a... No, no, there we go. There's like some glow going on there. Okay, all right. Tip of my nose, man. Tip of my nose is like crazy. And then just to top it all off, we are going to do the Makeup Revolution Strobe Highlighter in Supernova. <sighs> Don't fail me now, beauty. Don't fail me now. Oh man, you can see that from Mars. That's what I live for in a highlighter. I'm like Lightning McQueen. And I think from this day forward, I'm just going to layer three highlighters on my face ever and always. Forget just using one highlighter. No, no. My extra self going to need three. All right, next for lips, I have got one of the new Wet n Wild Liquid Catsuit Metallic. Not metallic. They do have metallic ones, but this one's just one of the matte ones. If you guys want to see like a whole video on those doing swatches and everything like that, I'd be happy to do that. I did pick up the whole range, so just let me know down in the little comments below if you guys want to see that. But for the sake of this video, we are using Behind the Bleachers, which is pretty just like rusty red. The one thing I don't like about the Wet n Wild liquid lipsticks is I feel like there's an inconsistency with their wands. Some of them are really feathery, like this one, and some of them are a lot smoother. So with the smoother ones, obviously it's easier to get a more precise application. And this one is definitely one of the more fuzzy ones. I don't know if you can tell like here and a little bit on here. I've just worked with Wet n Wild ones like from the same line, they aren't limited edition or anything, that have a better applicator. Like this one in the shade is teal, which is from the same, you know, line. The applicator on this is just a lot more dense and less like fuzzy and frayed. So I don't know what's up with that. If they're like, oh, we need to put the nice dense ones in like crazy colors like this, but you need a defined line for that and this. I'm actually not going to do eyeliner or mascara or falsies because I have somewhere where I'm going after this where I can't wear the full makeups. But this is the look. Um, not sure how I feel about these or even the Milani one. I definitely need to play with them a bit more, but from just this initial whatever was not impressed. This, I really enjoy how it looks on my skin. This, I really think is very pretty too. I need to try the other shade. I have been enjoying this concealer. Need to try the blushes out more and need to get a feel for like the formula of this highlighter, but all in all, not too much of a fail, I would say. Sorry for this being long, guys. You know, these videos are usually a bit longer than my normal ones, but thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think about the products I used. If you like them, you don't like them, let me know what other full face of or other get readies with me using what products you would like to see. I love you so much, and as always, keep it real. Mwah!